if you haven't yet, slowly make your way to your seat. <clears throat> Couch, kitchen chair, <sighs> mobility aid, whatever <sighs> makes you feel supported and secure. Find yourself there. If it feels right, we're going to scoot forward in that seat so that the edge of your where your butt cheek and thigh meet the edge of that space finds the edge of your seat this lets the thighs sort of hang off your seat leaves room for us to really move our legs if that's what your body is asking for this morning and then let those sits bones in each butt cheek really melt down into your seat. Relax through the thighs and the glutes. Feel your seat soften and widen into the supports beneath it. And then let that soft heaviness trickle down through the legs, the knees, down into the pads of the feet. You might even close your eyes if that feels right and feel the weight of your legs as they relax, pressing down through the pads of your feet. Take a moment to let your mind's awareness travel from your feet back up into your seat. As you relax through the body, can you feel your weight grow a little heavier in your seat? Relax the jaw, the tongue in your mouth. Let your shoulders soften towards the earth. And with each exhale, feel the body relax a little heavier into your seat, in your feet. You might begin to take deep breaths into the base of the belly. So the space behind the belly button, really feel the belly stretch and then let that breath go. However, feels nice, nose or mouth, doesn't matter. Again, a big, deep belly stretch. Exhale, let it go. And because this class is all about activating our throat chakra, as you continue to take these deep belly breaths, relaxing with each exhale, we might begin to really activate the throat center by taking a nice wide mouth ah, with each exhale. So when you're ready, deep breath in. Ah. Deep breath in. Ah. You might get really loud with this noise. Ah. You might, as you exhale, really wide in the mouth. Ah. Let that breath go. As you continue these big breaths, we're not just stretching the muscles and the fascia. Ah, we're stimulating the vagal nerves by vibrating those vocal cords with each ah. You might even take your fingertips to the hollow of the throat here, the space in between the collarbones. And with each ah, feel the vibrations in your fingertips. Ah. Ha a few more times just like this. Ha when our throat chakras are blocked or closed. Ha it's really a sign that we're struggling to acknowledge our own worthiness, right? Our own preciousness, our own value. Ah, and this worthiness is intrinsic. It's yours at birth. There's nothing that you can do to add or detract from it. Ah, but we often treat ourselves and live our lives according to how much worth we believe that we have. 
Ah, so when we open the throat chakra, activating the throat chakra, so often that can be just acknowledging your worth. Ah, acknowledging that in all of your imperfections, in all of your messiness, you are so damn worthy. So as you move this morning, as you breathe, as you activate your throat chakra, let it be messy. Let it be wild. Let it be different. Let it be unknown. And allow yourself to be worthy of whatever you experience in that place because however you move through this, you are. So we're going to bring some movement to the throat and we're simply going to, continuing our ahs, move on an inhale, deep breath in, exhale, ah, lift the chin skyward. Holding that chin skyward, we're really pressing length into the front of the throat. You might even take those fingertips that are on the hollow of the throat and gently weight the heart down with the heels of your hands to further get this stretching, this opening through the heart. As you breathe in, can you feel the air pass down through the throat into the base of the belly? enjoying this opening, this stretching, and then on your next deep breath in, we'll exhale, tuck the chin in towards the chest and give another audible sound. So inhale, exhale, ah. Hold here, keeping the chin tucked in towards the heart. The forehead weights heavy. We're going to lengthen through the cervical spine, through the back of the neck here. I just want you to see we're relaxing. You might even take your fingers, tips of one hand, and just place it along the th cervical spine. Your throat chakra is 3D, right? Just like your body is. It runs from the front to the back of the whole of the throat. So as we soften through the back of the neck, we are activating our throat chakra and activating it as we move the throat, as we bring, bring vibration, release, oxygen, vagal stimulation. We also are making it easier for us to speak, literally. The next time you need to say something, because you've been practicing sound, movement, release of chronic um, repetitive tension from holding in your voice, from holding in your feelings. Here, having activated this place, the next time a release <laughs> is required, you are much more apt to meet yourself there. All right, fingertips back at the front of the throat. We're going to start movement with the ahs. So deep breath in here. As you exhale, ah, and lift the chin. Ah. Deep breath in here. Bring length to the whole of the body. Lift as you do. And then ah. Tuck the chin. Inhale. Ah. Ah, start your own flow. Ah, be as loud as the throat says yes to. Ah, maybe that's a scream. Ah, maybe it's not audible at all. It's just a very <sighs> ferocious breath. Ah, once more, either way. Ah, ah, meet in a neutral posture, neutral spine. When you're ready, drop those shoulders. From here, we find a side to side. And again, all this noise that we're making, all of these movements that we're going to do with the face and the jaw, um, these are... Uh, 
yoga, face yoga movements, and they are going to deeply address the tension that hangs out in the jaw, the throat, and the shoulders that can really muck up this area. So we're going to relax our hands. You might place them in your laps. Let the shoulders drop. On an inhale, lift length through the spine, press through the top of the head. We're going to slowly, as you exhale, drop that right ear towards that right shoulder. And then you might take that left hand, press those fingertips down towards the earth because again, we're really getting into the side of the neck here. A deep vagal stem, right? Polyvagal theory, the nerves run from the base of the skull past the carotid, the vocal cords. You have your vagal break that bundles here at the heart, right? Your ventral vagal down through the diaphragm and digestive. Your ventral dorsal runs down into the pelvis and the thighs. And we stimulate all three of those just by stretching deeply in the neck, pressing those fingertips away. And then invitation here to dig a little deeper open the jaw wide on your next inhale so wide that you might even feel the muscles around the throat begin to engage really stretch it wide and hold it there as you breathe in with deep breaths This is an amazing opportunity to holler, to ah, and I'm really going to invite you to do it. Ah, if you're doing this and portions of the tummy are tightening or the shoulders cinch back up, this can be a sign that we have a lot to release in the body as far as owning our worthiness to just be messy and be ourselves. So go as far as your body says yes to. Ah, a few more breaths. Ah, and then on your next inhale, rise up, slowly switch sides, let that opposite ear drop towards the shoulder, fingertips of that right hand stretch down towards the earth, and then taking it where and how your body says yes to, a deep inhale when you're ready, open that jaw, Ah, I am actively pressing my ear down towards my shoulder as I press down towards those, uh, down <laughs> with the right hand. Really stretching, really lengthening. Ah, on your next inhale, release, roll up. Let's find this again. Right ear sinks down lengthen through that left arm and then you might sweep that right hand up to further weight the head down right if that feels good deepening this stretch here but then you might even take it further widening the jaw right taking the fingertips of that right hand to massage those masseter muscles and then open and close the jaw slowly you might leave pressure on those muscles. You might continue a gentle circles. You might not like that massage at all and be like, heck no. But take a moment, each deep breath filling all through the belly and the heart. Each exhale may be inspiring some vocal cord vibrations. Ah. And then release the hand from the jaw. Keep it on the head. We're going to now find a movement on an inhale, breathe in deep. Exhale, slowly turn the nose down towards the earth. And you're going to keep the head heavy. Inhale, rotate the gaze back forward. Exhale, rotate down towards the earth. So keeping the head heavy, exploring the neck and how it moves. And then again, there is no time like now ah, to let it be messy. You might take time 
<sighs> to feel what's happening in the neck and shoulders as you do this. <sighs> and then pause when you're ready, wherever feels right. Release that hand. Let the head float upright. Invitation here to close the eyes. Feel sensation. Floating, buzzing, aching, warmth, tingling. What do you feel? Maybe a deep sense of relaxation. Notice what feels enjoyable, what feels nice in this moment. Breathe it deeper into your body. And then on your next exhale, drop that opposite ear down. Let's find this on the opposite side. So you might sweep the hand up to weight the head and then massaging those jaw muscles or not. <sighs> but letting the jaw open and close here. With each deep breath in, that jaw opens. With each nice slow exhale, it closes. Ah. <sighs> ah. <sighs> <sighs> When you're ready, pause that massage to begin the rotation of the head down and back. <sighs> Taking time to feel how the stretch shifts through the neck and the shoulders as your head <sighs> changes directions. Mm, nice and slow, inviting that audible breath. Ah, anytime you like. Maybe tears come. Maybe you feel a catch in the throat. Ah, let the energy flow through you. The feelings will not overwhelm you. You are a river and they flow through you. When you're ready, pause release, float upright, and feel. Let's get into some shoulder rolls when you're ready. On an inhale, squeeze the shoulders forward, roll them up towards the ears. Exhale, squeeze them back, roll them down. Big, exaggerated movement with your breath. And as you do this, we want to continually keep length through the spine, sitting nice and tall, really grounding down through the sits bones and the pads of the feet to bring height to the whole trunk of the body, drawing these big full circles. And then an opportunity as you draw, to draw with the fingertips. Maybe it feels good, maybe it doesn't. This can be a lot, right? You might draw instead with the elbows, keeping the fingertips on top of the shoulders. You might just hang in those shoulder circles. A few more times in this direction, really feeling those big slow circles and then switch directions. few more circles. And then on that exhale, keeping those shoulders nice and melty towards the earth. From here, we tuck the elbows in towards the side body, palms up. A nice somatic release of the neck is going to involve releasing the muscles and the tissue below it. So keeping the elbows tucked in towards the side body, we're going to start a little swing here. And as you swing, we're really going to ground down through our sits bones and the pads of the feet because we want the knees to remain still. The movement is happening from the solar plexus shock right and then 
keeping the head still at first, so gazing forward. This allows the heart center to move, the neck to find a little twist here. And then the cool part is we're digging into modern neuroscience, which is really just honoring ancient yoga and somatic science that says that crossing the midline of the body, just like this, is powerful work for calming the nervous system, for building neural pathways between the amygdala and the medial prefrontal cortex, which helps us when we're in fight, flight, or freeze to more quickly touch base with our evolved mind, right? The mind that can think and plan and problem solve in the midst of big feels so that we can move through them with intention. All right, from here, pause in neutral. We're gonna tuck the thumbs in or poke the thumbs in at the armpits, elbows out wide, and then continue this swing. This time the throat, the head is gonna follow the shoulders at first, right? Finding this big swing. You might even move with the breath. Inhale to one side, exhale to the other. And then pause in neutral when you're ready. This time, keeping the head looking forward, keeping those knees looking forward, moving again with the breath. Releasing tension in the neck and the shoulders. Beautiful. Drop it on down. Wonderful. From here, a deep inhale is going to sweep the arms up and out. As you exhale, left hand to right knee, right hand plants behind you, maybe on the back of your chair. Maybe it just extends out long. And then we're really going to, again, turn from the solar plexus, allow the heart center to really take charge. You might even use your hands as anchors to help engage or invite the body further into this twist. Just like before, the knees are gonna wanna travel, keep them planted. And then the throat, the neck, we're gonna rotate this beautiful, strong, powerful portion of our body to turn the head, to look behind that right shoulder and breathe. As you twist out the spine, breathe in deep to the belly, the heart, and the throat. From here, really just exploring how far back behind you the neck wants to turn. So normally in these twists, I encourage you to twist with the heart and not with the neck. But because we are already here, we've already twisted with the heart, we'll just take a moment to explore where the neck wants to be here, how far it wants to go, and then notice with your mind's eye any feeling of stretching, pulling, any sensations in the neck. Just notice we don't judge, right? The witness within us, there is no good or bad. There just is. We're here to experience. So let yourself release when you're ready. Whoo, that nice long twist. You might shake it out. Take a moment. Feel your spine. Feel the neck, the shoulders. You might feel a little uneven, right? You might notice that there are some parts that have been engaged and other parts that haven't. Now let's find this twist on the opposite side. On your next big breath in, sweep the arms out and up. As you exhale, plant the hands. Turn from the heart and solar plexus. Once you've gone as far as the heart says yes, then we're going to invite that neck. Really just noticing how far the neck wants to turn and then where we feel these sensations in the neck, jaw, shoulders, ears, head, right? What is this part of our body <sighs> saying? <sighs> 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 
three or four more breaths like this. Really breathing in deep. Another beautiful place to find those audible exhales. Ah. 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 Release when you're ready. Beautiful. As we open up and activate this area of the body, as we learn to own our worthiness, as we learn to speak up, as we learn to release the shame of who we are, what our needs are, what we need to say, we are not only opening up the throat, right? But we're opening up the heart center because the heart, right, is what gives us courage. The heart is what says, yes, I, I deserve to say these things, right? I deserve to ask for help. I deserve to say no. So we want to open up the whole of the front body to aid the opening of the throat. And the cool part is, is yes, <laughs> ancient yoga says that works. Yes, modern <laughs> anatomy and physiology says that works. So we're going to heel toe the feet out wide into a goddess pose. Now the knees are going to track over the toes. So take a moment there. We're really stretching open through the inner thighs, pressing those knees back behind you. And then feel those sits bones anchored down. Feel the pads of the feet once more anchored down. On an inhale, press down as you rise up tall. We're going to start some goddess cat cow. So on an exhale, we're going to curl the tailbone up towards the heart. Just like this, you're gonna feel the low back lengthen. I'm gonna change what I look like so you can see. Here's a long neutral spine. Once I tuck the tailbone in, you can see my front body shortens, my back body lengthens here, and then melting the heart down, or the forehead down towards the heart as well. So the tailbone curls up, the forehead melts down, Feeling the whole back body lengthen. Here, really noticing once more the cervical spine at the back of the neck. You might take your hands and plant them, fingertips pointed towards the inner thigh, and just use the hands to gently open this inner thigh out. Hang out for as long as you would like. And then on your next breath in, press down through the feet in your seat, rise tall, lift that chin skyward, just like we were earlier, pressing length through the whole front of the throat. This time, instead of the tailbone curling up, we're going to curl the tailbone back, right? This is going to let the belly fall forward. It's going to shorten the lumbar spine here and open the whole of the front body. You're going to be tempted to let the back of the head rest on those shoulder blades, but because we're actively lifting through the chin, we're going to generously keep that from happening. So again, fingertips pointed inward. You might gently open the thighs here. As you do, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Let the heart center pop forward as that chin lifts. So this is a big, big front body opener. Again, remain here for as long as it feels good. But on an exhale, pressing through the feet, let's curl that tailbone back in towards the heart, drop the forehead low. We're going to move at the pace of our breath. So inhale, press through the feet, rise up. Exhale, curl that tailbone in, drop the forehead back and forth and your focus here might be on each inhale squeezing the shoulder blades lifting the chin just feeling the heart and the throat really make space here once or twice more 
and then meet me in a neutral posture from your goddess pose. If your outer cheeks, your outer hips are talking to you, heel toe it in. Give yourself a little space here. We don't want to cramp. We don't want to ache because we're going to remain in goddess pose for a little while longer. We've shifted the tailbone forward and back. Now we're going to shift it side to side. So pressing through that right foot, feel that right hip shift up towards the right shoulder. What's happening here is you're kind of doing a side crunch. You might notice the left side feels pretty lengthened and you might exaggerate that by leaning a bit into it if it feels nice. And then switch sides, pressing into the opposite foot, feeling that hip lift the side crunch. And then find a gentle back and forth, back and forth with the hips. This is great for hip and low back strength. You can do this seated like this as well. There is no reason that any of these movements can't be found exactly where your body wants to be. Shifting the hips left and right, back and forth. And then let's focus a moment on just the pelvic bowl and the hips, knowing that as we release what's down here, it aids in releasing and supporting the work of releasing what's up here. So hands on hips, if that feels nice, we're just going to find some circles now. So we're playing with the front back, the left, right, and now we're just going to join them, really exploring the range of motion of your whole pelvic bowl. And then whichever way you've been drawing circles, go ahead and draw them the opposite direction. Right? Part of owning, opening our throat chakra, owning our worthiness, right? So often we lose track of it in our heart chakra <clears throat> and it's because we feel powerless, right? So our hips and our low back, this is where we find a lot of our power. So we engage with that energetic power so that we really open up that heart center, right? So that we can speak, move, activate that throat chakra. Go ahead and find neutral when you're ready. Heel, toe, the feet inward. From here, I know I do it all the time, but we're going to take your version of a figure four. Now, I'm going to invite you to do it a little differently than maybe you have in the past. Typically, I invite us to grab a yoga strap if that's your jam. It is my jam for every figure four because I got them thick thighs. And you're just going to place the ball of your foot in that strap. And our first step going to be crossing it over the thigh or a block if you have it here and then taking that left heel of your hand you're going to press the inner thigh down and roll it away right here's the figure four that we know and love <sighs> or hate <laughs> uh, it's true though what they say the yoga the yoga asanas that we dislike the most are often the ones that life <laughs> needs us to rumble with the most. From here, a traditional fold, if it feels nice, an inhale to find length through the spine. Exhale, melt the belly and the heart. This is nice because there's space here to do that in this figure four. Ooh, my low back just popped. Get it, lumbar spine. <sighs> I love doing big twists, so if you're in for a twist, take that left hand to the pad of that left foot, left strap, calf, right? Like find somewhere to brace. And then on an inhale, sweep that right arm open. And again, can you press length through the spine? Feel the throat lengthen as you gaze skyward. And then when you're ready, lower it back down. From here, taking that strap or without the strap, we're going to close our inner thighs together. You can see how my thick thighs, babes, was 
up. You can leave the strap on the ball of your foot or you can wrap it around the, the shin, but we're gonna really squeeze the inner thighs together. That's our goal, right? Squeezing the inner thighs together. Many, many ways in which we can invite this posture into our body so it doesn't matter how close the thighs get it doesn't matter what it looks like what matters is that the energy of your inner thighs are squeezing together beautiful and then I'm going to show you we're doing a version of gomukasana right this is our our cow pose so this is the bottom of the cow if you were um seated on the floor, right? This would look like a cow's mouth, your legs would, and we're just squeezing the inner thighs together. Okay, release when you're ready. I know we've just been working on the right side. Now we're gonna do gomukasana in the upper body and then combine them. And then we'll move towards the end of our practice. So you're gonna take your right hand on an inhale, sweep it skyward, reach for the sky, and then as you exhale, you're going to bend that elbow, keeping all this length in the armpit, right? Bend the elbow, plant the palm of your hand at your upper back, right? The lowest portion of your neck. And so we're finding all this stretch here. You might even take that opposite hand and really invite some stretch into the area of the armpit with the other hand. We're gonna lengthen that left arm out. We're gonna turn the palm back behind us, stretch through those fingertips, right? Really lengthen that arm. And then we're gonna swing it back and reach up so it looks like this, right? And our goal here might be for fingertips to touch. It might be grabbing the hands, reaching for one another. This can feel really good. Maybe you're like me and your hands aren't even close. Really, it doesn't matter. The whole point of this is we squeeze the shoulder blades together, whoop, open up through the heart center, and then breathe deep into the throat hanging out just like this, right? Letting it be messy. We'll practice this on the other side and I'll show you what it looks like to do it with a strap. Okay, and then you might, as time goes on, slowly walk those closer together. But this is a deep, deep heart opener. Okay, release, shake it out. We've done gomukasana in pieces on one half. Let's put those pieces together for the other half of the body. So let's get the hips into it. Let's find our figure four and we'll go through our flow just to stretch our way there. That inner heel of the hand rolls the thigh down and away. <sighs> We're not here to rush it. Take your time. On an inhale, find length. Exhale, melt and fold. When it feels right, if it feels right, hand is to the foot or strap. Ooh, left hand reaches skyward. Let the head, let the eyes follow those outstretched fingertips. And then bring it on back down. Beautiful. So go mukasana with the feet. We're going to squeeze those inner thighs together, right? I'm lifting my thigh up. You might even literally lift that thigh. Create space. The flesh of your body is beautiful. There is no shame here. So crossing and squeezing those inner thighs together. And then find your go mukasana. Uh, with the hands. So inhale, sweep that left arm up this time. We're going to use a strap if you would like. So keeping that long strap in that lifted left arm. And then again, we're going to bend that elbow, plant the hand at the upper back. So you might find a deeper stretch. And then I'm going to turn and show you what's happening back here. So I've got a hold of this strap. You see it's hanging down my back here. Now reaching 
that right arm out, turning the palm back behind me, bending the elbow, I can grab this strap and slowly walk my hands towards one another. And when they've gotten as far as feels good, here's where the strap is dope, y'all. On a deep inhale, pull that strap tight, right? And as you do, breathe space into the heart center. We always want to do yoga without props, and then we don't realize what we're missing out on. And it's not because your body can't do it. It has nothing to do with that. It's because props bring a layer of awesome that you just cannot find without them. So, go Mukasana. Woo! Squeezing those inner thighs. When you're ready, release it all. Ugh, let it be messy. <sighs> we'll end our practice by getting cozy for a moment, relaxing in our chair, and then stimulating those vocal cords. So you might place those fingertips near the hollow of the throat again. And this time we're gonna use a tool designed by Peter Levine, um, and it very much reflects the use of Om mantra chanting in, um, in ancient South Asian practices, but his is called Vu, and you can say it, it's just V-O-O, -O, right? Vu, but the sound Vu has a very vibratory effect, and when we, with each exhale, Vu, the nervous system responds rather swiftly to it. So you might place the fingers at the hollow of the throat, take a deep breath in and find your vu. And it can be low, it can be high, but play with it because we wanna find the tone that brings the most vibration to the fingertips here. So play around with it. Vu. With each exhale. Vu. You also notice that it draws the exhale out longer. Vu, which stimulates the vagal break, slowing your heart rate. Vu, For a few more breaths, let the whole of your body soften as you continue to sink into the relaxing and opening vibrations in your throat. Ooh. Ooh. Continue this for as long as you like. When you're ready, you might pause the sound and sit with yourself for a moment in the silence of your body. As you breathe in, feel the air pass through the throat. Maybe it's cool and crisp, maybe it's warm. You spent this time loving on your throat, owning your worthiness that says, yes, you can trust yourself. Yes, you are wise. Yes, you can speak up. Yes, your needs deserve to be met. The time that you spent is powerful. So take some time to thank yourself for showing up. You might take some time to thank your throat for being with you, for doing the work to heal alongside you. Remember, as you move into the rest of the day, the rest of your week, to take the voos with you. Anytime the throat constricts, anytime 
you want to say something, but you're not sure, take a moment, breathe space into your throat, move the energy through and know that you are a river and the energy flows through you. And as always, the light in the dark in me sees the light in the dark in you. And we are the same. <laughs>